brothers. I will not be slandered! General, you saw my reports. You know it's not my fault. The facts suggest otherwise. You were ordered to retrieve the artifact. You failed to do so. If I had been given drow warriors instead of goblin trash! Oi! What? You scrag! Enough! A blast of mental energy washes over you, filling the room. Your tadpole squirms, urging you to obey. Let me make sure I understand this. You're claiming that General Thorne gave you the wrong soldiers. Yes. No! You blame the Absolutes chosen for your failure. Of course it is not the General's fault. Whose then? Your mind extends outward and grasps at nothing. In Catherick's place, you feel an absence. No psionic power. No tadpole at all. The goblins! They failed me. They failed us all. You lying little! And what would you do to those that have failed you? They are put to death, obviously. True. Ultimate failure must earn ultimate punishment. Night Warden Minthara, your crime is incompetence, and your sentence is death. No! Make her passing slow, Disciple Zorel. Be creative. As the General's attention shifts to you, a memory stirs. A memory of this room, and his voice raised in anger. I'm surprised to see you again, true soul. You are here to assist and not to meddle, I trust. I would remind you that while in my halls, you obey me just as you would any other chosen. What say you about our Minthara? It is fitting that one mad dog should judge another. Better than you know yourself, it seems. But we are here to speak of Minthara, not you. She will die, eventually. Take her below. No! Please! Mercy! Please! <laughs> bye bye, princess. Kill the goblins, too. What? No! You creaking old bag of shit! <laughs> Sorry, my lord, she's an unbeliever outside my control. Try again. Dispose of the rest as you see fit. Or better yet, 
Let us take advantage of our surprising guest and their particular creative genius. I'm sure the results will send a clear message to the troops on the importance of discipline. Of course, my lord. Thank you. You heard the general. The goblins are yours. Deal with them however you wish. Do have fun. Here in the seat of the Absolute's power, your authority over them is complete. They will obey any command. Report to me upstairs when you're done. Yeah. You ain't gonna do anything drastic, are ya? We've been nothing but loyal! Time you were greeted in this throne room like a god, not the living wreck you are now. Your disgrace has something to do with this Catherick. You yearn to flay him until he forgets himself, as you have. He healed up a treat. He could enjoy your cuts forever and a day. You were adored, Minthar. Brought up from the darkness and into the Absolute's light. She cherished you, but it wasn't enough. You were distracted by your own desires. Bloodlust, murder, chaos, and most damning of all, an unexpected weakness. A longing for acceptance and affection. From a mortal. You have no right! Ah! Ah! We have every right. You are nothing. Minthara's mind connects with yours. Not strong as you remember it, but fractured. Disintegrating. Come to observe, true soul. She is a lesson. None can rise so high that they cannot fall again. We are erasing her. Yes, your authority is great. We can learn, watching you break what little remains of her mind. Immediately, your mind is swept into a greater vortex. A psionic storm with Minthara at its center. Torturers are not dominating her. They are destroying her mental defenses and exposing her to something else. The Absolute. Navigating the storm, you reach the nexus of her mind. It is a wound bleeding raw emotion and shattered memories. But she senses your arrival. You came. I prayed that you would, but there are no gods left to me. This thing that speaks inside me, it has all but destroyed me. But it fears you, even so, I cannot resist it while 
until my tormentors live. I didn't dare hope. I owe you more than my life. But first, let's make these bastards bleed! Her mind fills with warmth, and she gently releases you. Impossible! She was broken! I last left Moonrise as a commander in the Absolute's army, obeying the voice of a god. I thought I had found a home and a purpose. Now I leave as an exile. But you risked your life to rescue me. For that, I am grateful. The artifact connects with her pulling your minds together and showing her all that you have seen. The prism, your dream visitor, the protection that keeps you from obeying the absolute and becoming a lithid. She knows it all in a moment. Her mind reels, but is no longer clouded. She accepts the truth. She has no choice. There is much we must discuss. Do you have a safe place to camp nearby? Goodbye for now. I will see you soon. It does not compare with the comforts of home, but your camp is almost palatial in comparison to my previous accommodation. Thank you for allowing me to come here and for bringing me back to myself. Each memory that returns to me is more disturbing than the last. The things that I did in the name of the Absolute the things that were done to me. They broke my mind. Precisely. While our tadpoles live, and the cult have the means to control them, we will never be safe. We must eradicate them. Starting with General Thorm. I mean, Ketherick. My deference to him is a habit that will die hard, I fear. Not only this battle, but all that come after. Swear that you will keep me close. Until the Absolute is dead, at least. Thank you. I knew you were different to other true souls when we lay together. Now I know it was the prism that silenced the Absolute in those moments, not you. But it was not the prism that held me and touched my mind and body. That was you.
For now, we will travel together and fight together. In time, perhaps we will lie together again. Kind words do not always come easily to me. Her entire being joins with you for a moment, and you see all that she is. Dangerous, cunning, wounded, brutal, paranoid, and utterly loyal to those she trusts. And you have earned that trust, along with a small measure of her affection. It is a rare thing, well hidden in the cold fortress of her mind. And it is precious. Together, we can have our vengeance on those who infected us. Rest well, and keep your wits about you. Tomorrow, we go to war with the Cult of the Absolute. I would gladly join you in the fight. Leave one of your other allies here, and I shall. You wish to consult me? I fought at his side once, shortly after my conversion. Before the battle, he was everything a general should be. A charismatic leader with a brilliant strategic mind. And when the fighting began, he led his troops from the front and cut through the enemy like a scythe through stalks. Blows and arrows rained down on him, and before long, his face was a mask of blood. But he did not fall. He did not even falter. When we won the day, Ketherick's armor was bent and shattered, but his flesh was unmarked. I have lived long enough to know that few things are impossible in this world. Oh, Catherick's power is a rare thing, though. I have never seen its like. There is a connection to this night song of Balthazar's, whatever or whoever it might be. We must find it and destroy it. I was the Absolute's dagger. I remember every throat that it held me to, and every drop of blood it forced me to spill. I take no responsibility for the lives I took. I did nothing in the Absolute's name. I was merely a weapon that it wielded. A disturbing admission. I would rather die than lose control of myself again. The tadpole. The absolute. They work together like a drug. I did not feel I was compelled to act against my will. I felt ecstatic to serve. Every action seemed a deliberate choice. The best choice even though I could no more have resisted its commands than flesh can resist decay. Even rational minds like ours cannot reject such a powerful influence. The Absolute can make the impossible seem inevitable. I took up my oath long ago when I swore bloody vengeance against any who defied Loth. Now I myself have sinned against the Spider Queen. Though my faith is shattered, my oath endures. I am sworn to destroy all those who serve the Absolute. It is not noble, it is necessary. If we do not destroy the cultists, they will destroy everything. We are all that stands between this world and annihilation. A 
A disparate collection of vagabonds and strays. Did you have anyone particular in mind? He's been deprived of freedom and strong blood for so long that he is addicted to both. While those addictions have their hold on him, he is still a slave. <laughs> no. He is well aware that I would exsanguinate him entirely if he flashed his fangs at me. And while you live, you'll be enslaved to your appetites and hungers. We all feed on something, and if we are deprived of it, we will fight for it. But Astarian is not only bound to his needs and desires. He is still bound to something more powerful. His master, he will only be free when Kazador is dead. And that is as it should be. When the time comes, we must hope that he does not only take Kazador's long life, but the power that has sustained him as well. Good. I do not like to stand idle. You wish to consult me? A disparate collection of vagabonds and strays. Did you have anyone particular in mind? It would have been better for us had she embraced Shah and claimed the power of the goddess. But it is better for Shadowheart to be free of that poisonous influence. The very concept of Sharon worship is self-indulgent. They would have you think every whispered word and hidden thought is of value, but it is not so. I have performed a thousand interrogations, squeezing out the most guarded secrets held in heart, mind, and soul. I can tell you this. When the trivial parts have been whittled away and I have sifted through what remains, in most cases, a person amounts to nothing at all. Then speak. Not directly. My memories were not removed. They were obscured by the Absolute's voice. By its presence. The tadpole is a conduit for that voice, not its origin. And while the prism protects us, the Absolute cannot reach us. As for the tadpoles themselves, for the moment I do not believe they are malevolent. They are incubating within our brain matter, not feeding on it. Is there a reason you chose me as your confidant in this matter? As you should. But I am not sure that I can trust you. There are those within Menzo Baranzan that we call Kalith Karthan. Those driven by blood. They are the mad, lost to all reason, and subservient to nobody. Even Lolth, malicious and brutal as she is, cannot abide them. They kill, and cannot say why. So they are destroyed for the greater good. When you speak to me of yearning and urges to kill, I fear you are like them. Controlled by a bloodlust that you do not comprehend. I would kill you without hesitation. But for you to even speak of this to me shows that if there is a madness in you, it does not own you yet. If it ever takes you, I will be there to put you down. 